my name is Tony White. I'm managing editor of Chapter House Comics, uh, Canada's premier publisher. I'd like to say we're the largest, but that's kind of hard to stay hard, hard to say with all the other uh, publishers out there that do a variety of different things. But we do uh, about 11 different titles. Uh, but uh, it's not about me. It's about the guys coming out. So I'm going to introduce to you first, uh, weighing in at 125 from New Brunswick. Giselle Lagasse. Giselle is best known for her work on Archie, Gem in the, Hol Gem in the Holograms, Betty Boop, uh, her own creator owned works, uh, Menage a Trois, and uh, Yuri Cuties. A lot of yeah. Giselle is a little tired today. Yeah. So let's try and make it really, really easy on them today when we pick our stuff, okay? Uh, second, I'd like to introduce you to Fernando Ruiz. <laughs> Fernando is best known for his work on Archie, Die Kitty Die, Boo, the world's cutest dog, and Animal Jam. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming out. Um, they both are veterans at this. They've done probably I don't know how many sketch battles you've done between the, all the shows you've gone to. I mean, Fan Expo, I wanted to see another. <laughs> they, they do them all the time. So you, you guys go to, them all, go to the conventions all the time. They always do a sketch battle with you guys. So they, they know what they're getting into. Oh, yes. We won't any, have anybody drawing a hamburger or, and, a, <laughs> and a beer. A help me sign. Was anybody here on Friday? Uh. Oh, you guys missed a good one. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I'm assuming that most of you know how this goes, uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to pull the audience for a character and a thing that they are doing. Uh, sorry, we're talking to the bottom of it. it doesn't work. Uh, we're going to talk to you. We're going to try and pick a character and uh, a concept or a thing that they're doing or a way that I'll guide you through it. So initially, I'd like to hear just a few ideas of what you guys would like to see them draw. Josie. Okay, you? Han Solo cup. Just <laughs> the toast cup. Man. Just, just spit them out. This, we're, we're not in class. No. <laughs> you can yell it all you want. These guys ultimately get to decide what they do, but let's make it interesting. Oh God, I like that. Game of Thrones. I have to Google it. I don't know what it is. I kind of like that. She doesn't know what the what the wall is, so she'd have to Google that. Um, On a what? I think that was oh, a thing. Oh, Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I, I apologize. That's that's one step outside of my nerddom. I don't read a lot of Dune. I did watch the movies when I was like 12, 11. I don't remember them. Um, so yeah, I think we're I think we're leaning towards a an Archie character of some sort doing something. Let's hear uh, a few more of those. That's a little bit too much. Let's keep it a little more simple. <laughs> Otherwise, Giselle's going to hurt me. Uh, uh, I, heard, I, heard, I heard Josie a while ago. Yeah. Okay. We're going to do Jughead on the wall. Okay. We're going to do Josie. Give me a few more options. A fat girl? <laughs> pickle Rick? You know Pickle Rick? Rick and Morty? Yeah, yeah. I've done the Pickle... Uh, Let's do, do with the pickle. <laughs> Cover your ears. <laughs> um, I, no, okay. So let's, let's pass on that. Let's just make this a little more. I have no problems doing the pickle. Okay, we'll do Josie, do and Josie. she's hanging out with Pickle Rick, riding Pickle Rick. I can make pick, the pickle pretty. On his shoulders, <laughs> on his shoulders, riding Pickle Rick on his shoulders. Is that? Josie riding Pickle Rick. Yeah, riding. Yeah. Sure. 
Okay, and you're okay with Jughead how in Westeros? She, how come she gets the X-rated stuff? <laughs> we didn't say that Jughead was alone on the wall. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's you true. Pickle, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think John was on the other side of the wall when he got his... So, I mean, it's the night watch. Cover your ears. <laughs> All right, so we'll give them a few minutes to take a look at that. It, I don't know if you guys need uh, oh, any, any internet to, I'm, I'm happy to donate my phone to your cause. I think if you I'm have good. to look for any, um, any references. I'm looking at the pickle. Uh -oh. pickle. Uh -oh. You better turn those before, filters up. Like if I'm remembering <laughs> by heart, so. We're gonna be a while, she just Googled pickle. <laughs> <laughs> And there's an entire menage a trois story. <laughs> <laughs> Cover your ears. <laughs> well, you said he's riding the pickles. I mean, I have to be really careful what I'm doing there. <laughs> I kind of meant on his non-existent shoulders. But, yes, yes, yeah. okay, good. <laughs> you, you do with the pickle as you please. Yes. <laughs> Whatever makes it easiest for you to draw. We can ask the children to cover their eyes too. Cover your eyes. <laughs> so, as I was mentioning here, uh, Menage a Trois is is uh, Giselle's uh, create her own series. She does it herself, self publishes it, and everything. Has anybody here read it? Do they own any volumes? Have you have you heard of it? Have you seen it? Because it's 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 quite the it's quite the comic. Anybody? Oh, you guys have to go downstairs. Just go down to her booth. She's at uh, A4. She's at A4, and a whole bunch of them are up on the racks, and I'll tell you, it's, it's phenomenal. They, she's been busy all day. Do you have any left? The books? Yeah, all oh, weekend. Yeah, yeah, They've yeah. just been flying off the rack. Yeah, I do. Okay, yeah, go take a look at it. It's, a, uh, it's, it's not for kids. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's certainly uh, uh, meant for a more mature audience, so it's, it's meant for people who would get the... Uh, Get the jokes and the uh, the gist of it, but can you just describe that to people as PG as possible? Menage a trois. Yeah, menage a trois. Uh, well, it's, it's for anybody who's familiar with uh, Three's Company. The, uh, the, the can TV you hear show. okay? Can you hear me? Okay. So anybody familiar with Three's Company from the uh, late seventies, early eighties? It was just this guy living with two girls. Uh, Three's Company was about this guy. He was he was not the landlords wouldn't have left him. Uh, live with the two girls, so he was pretending that he was gay. So that was the hijink part of, of this uh, situation. But here, it's basically Gary, who's never been, he's 29, he's never dated, he's never been with a girl, and he's gonna end up living with these two girls who are gonna help him, uh, you know, get going in life and start dating, meeting women, and, uh, you know, to, to so that he doesn't remain uh, a virgin for the rest of his life. So, uh, so basically, it's, it's a lot of sexual hijinks, but uh, it's, it's not as pornographic as the name makes it sound. So it's, it's more like Three's Company if it was on HBO. Maybe, if, you know, with a little touch of like uh, Big Bang Theory, so there's a lot of geekiness in it because Gary's he's kind of a geek, he loves comics and anything geek culture. So I think people that love comics and stuff like that would probably enjoy it. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. And you have a, a more PG uh, title, uh, Yuri Cuties. Uh, yeah, Eerie Cuties is, um, is sort of like, maybe like Archie, because it is, it's in high school, it, it follows the, the, all the teenagers, but they're all different types of monsters, so it's not just like a vampire school or whatever. It's vampires, succubus, uh, snake girls, uh, werewolves, uh, all kinds of, of creatures, monsters, and it's basically just them trying to uh, uh, get along together, but also accepting who they are as a, as a monster that they're going to become when they grow up. So a lot of them are, don't want to be what they're going to become. So it's a little bit, but you know, it's it's like anything. We we have all these issues growing up. We're just seeing it through the eyes of uh, monsters as teenagers. Yeah. And what would you say the age range is on Menage a Trois and on Eerie Cuties? If you're uh, Eerie Cuties, I think 11 and up, and uh, Menage Menage a Trois. As soon as you know, kids understand, you know how babies are made. Uh, I think they can probably get into it, you know, because they're they're gonna have to learn about it at some point. So, so, so like 30, 30, 30 plus, <laughs> 30, 30 plus, 30 plus. 
Um, yeah, probably okay. Probably 13, 14, <laughs> probably. Uh, my girls have read Eerie Cuties and love it, and they can't wait for another volume. Um, but no, they, they will not be reading Menage a Trois until they are 30 or I am dead. Um, <laughs> uh, so Fernando has, has worked on a variety of projects, but m mostly Archie for the last 20 years, really. And he teaches at the Kubert School as well, yep. uh, keeping himself quite busy. He has to fly out tonight, I believe, early, early this evening in order to go to work tomorrow. So Yeah. yeah. So w what... As far as Archie goes, like, what was your most favorite uh, series? What was your what was the favorite your favorite title to have worked on, or your favorite storyline to have worked on? Well, I um, I liked a, a, a few of them. Like, uh, I did the artwork for Archie's Weird Mysteries, which was based on a cartoon. Uh, the Life with Archie magazine, where Archie's married to both Betty and Veronica. Honestly, that's that's probably my favorite. Oh, out of thanks. everything, honest, honestly, that's I've I've got them. I do like Afterlife with Archie, but that Life with Archie and where they keep going back and forth between the two, the, the two, two the two variations. Universes. Yeah, that's my favorite. Uh, I've read the entire I've read the entirety of it. So, but out of everything, um, probably my the most fun I had was on uh, Archie versus Predator. That was that was a blast because it was as crazy as you would think it is. Did anybody read it? Uh, it's it is pretty crazy. Really? Okay. No. Uh, you have any of those at your table? Uh, you know, I just sold out today. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I might have grabbed one to put on my shelf then, but I dodged a bullet, I guess. <laughs> uh, so you also do uh, you also do Boo, the world's cutest dog, and you do Animal Jam. Boo, uh, the world's cutest dog, Animal Jam, uh, Grumpy Cat versus Garfield. Right. Right. Um, I just did a cover for Red Sonja for Dynamite. I love Red Sonja. Yeah, it's a that great, was a lot of fun. Great title. That was a lot of fun. In fact, that cover was uh, inked by Jay Bone, who uh, it has inked a lot of stuff for everybody, including Canadian. a lot of our stuff on uh, Die Kitty Die. He's, he's done work for that. Uh, and it, it's uh, colored. That cover is colored by uh, my Die Kitty Die partner, Dan Barron. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, you, speaking of Die Kitty Die, has anybody here picked up and read that? Any of them? Yeah, a few people out there. He has nice. copies of that at his table. Thank the, you. the original, the first hardcover and a bunch of single issues, and we, the second series as well. Yeah, and the, the Halcon cover exclusive of. Uh, we Die have an Kitty exclusive Halcon cover down there, uh, featuring some people that you would recognize, <laughs> and it's uh, it's limited to. 500 copies, but I think we're only because some of them were given as gifts in your warp speed bags. Did anybody get one in their warp speed bag? Yeah, and they gave out a few to the guests. I think we only have like 200 to sell, so there's not that many, and we've been selling them all weekend. So if you want to pick that up, it, just head down to Fernando's table, and they're, they're there, and if he runs out, I've got more at mine. Um, but yeah, so tell us a little bit about Die Kitty Die. Well, that's a series that I do with uh, Dan Parent, my fellow Archie artist, who, um, you know, we came up with this together on our own. And it's about uh, Kitty Ravencraft is a pretty a young witch who also has her own comic book. And the publisher of her comic book wants to spike sales a little bit by uh, killing her off. And that's where uh, the, the fun and hilarity begin. Pretty much spends the first uh, the first volume of that trying to figure out who's trying to kill her and how to do, how to how to avoid it. Right. Yeah. We we're we're in the middle of our second story arc right now. In the first spoiler. One, <laughs> in the first one, a lot of different uh, comic book characters are out to uh, kill Kitty, hence the title. Um, but now in the current storyline, uh, there's a Die Kitty Die movie in the works and somebody is out to kill her again, but even the readers don't know who it is, so it's a bit more of a, of a mystery, surprise sort of thing. Introduces a few more characters as well, right? Yeah, yeah, we expand the, the Kitty universe, which we kind of build up with a lot, of, uh, a lot of different comic book characters who may seem kind of familiar, you know, if for, to longtime comic fans. Um, so a lot of them show up to uh, try to kill Kitty. In return, they get their own successful comic book series if they could do it. 
Yeah, it's it's one of the one of my favorite series that we put out. Giselle works on it as well. She's done a couple of the short stories. Which one would you say is your favorite? Um, they were both fun. Uh, yeah, both of them are. Uh, it's to me, it reads a little bit like uh, Archie, but a little bit uh, you know more risque. So it's uh, certainly they're they're fun. The last one was really fun, and because it was on the beach, it was actually pretty easy to draw because there's almost like no perspective. It's just like yeah. so. You know that when you're reading a story uh, at the beach that the artist is really happy because there's, there's <laughs> no clothes to worry about. There's just like, you know, bikinis and just, you know, and then the backgrounds are easy. It's like the best stories to draw. So. You can sneak in some other characters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's it. The, she did one for the summer special just recently and I, it just came out about a month ago. It's, it's quite, quite awesome. Um, does anybody in the crowd want to ask a question while I'm up? If you do, I just line up one of these mics so we can hear you really, really well. And you know, it's just if you don't mind, it's a little bit easier. You're up front. I, you can go ahead and ask, and I'll just repeat it. But if you, anybody else wants to ask a question, just head up to the mic, and I'll, key, I'll cue you in. Uh, but what did you want to ask? He wants to know if it's fun drawing comics or if it's more serious work where you just focus in on it. Is that what you're asking? Okay. We'll start with Fernando. Well, um, it's the, the work itself is usually pretty fun. Um, but I mean, for, for most of us, we tend to work at home by ourselves. So that's, you know, pretty serious stuff. It's solitary. Unless, unless we're crazy and just laugh by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's, you know, it's, it's uh, the, the career you know, just speaking for myself, it's the career I always wanted to be in, you know, wanted to make a living at drawing comics. So I'm very uh, lucky to be able to do that. Giselle? Um, you have to be, uh, I think it's a discipline and it has to be something that you, it's not for everybody. It has to be for someone who's able to sit at a table for hours on end, uh, like eight, 10 hours and you're not just, you're not going to be distracted to get up. You won't have the desire. Some people just can't do it. They'll, they'll draw for two hours and they, got, they have to stop. But you can't get anything done. Like these pages take a long time to do. So uh, you have to be the type of person who can tolerate the kind of the demands of sitting for so long to, to, to draw these pages. You know, because sometimes they do take 15 hours in a day, and you, and sometimes you have to be ready for the deadlines and stuff like that. So there is, it's fun to do, but. At the end of the day, it is kind of demanding. Uh, so I think it's, uh, it's 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 not for everybody. Usually, it's for people that are, don't mind being alone, uh, are fine with that, and can tolerate, or, or can see the time pass. Like eight hours have passed, and they, they don't really see it that they've spent so much time on a, on a page. So I, I think people that are made for that, they, they, it just comes naturally, so they don't feel the pain from it as much, you know. So, but I know a lot of people who would love to, to, to draw, but they end up going to the writing because it goes a little bit faster. So, uh, so they end up just quitting drawing because they realize that it's, they just can't spend that much time on, on drawing <coughs> a page. You know? I think anybody in the business would probably say to you that it's, it's a dream job. If the, uh, you only get into comics if you really like, love comics, I would say. But for the most part, it's probably, you know, it's, it's a lot of hard work. So you really have to have passion for it. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, this is slightly off topic, but after Life with Archie, I've been waiting a long time for volume two of the graphic novel to come out. Uh -oh. And I'm wondering, uh, will it? Isn't that, a, it's, it's like they, they produce like one every, every six to eight months or something like that. It's, it, I've been waiting for it as well. Um, but I don't think it's anything that you've ever really worked with, but, uh, or, but you know their publishing schedule is pretty erratic on that. Yeah, you, you'll get it when you get it. It'll. <laughs> Yeah, well, if you can put in a good word, like, I'm old, you can see the gray hair, they can't wait too long or I'll miss it. Anyway, uh -huh. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. If you can get a, um, like, a six-issue miniseries of any mainstream character to do as your, what, what would your dream mainstream character be, and how would you make them your own? Good question. I've asked that one before. I like that. I like that question. If you were going to do any mainstream character, I think we we talked to team, but specifically like a specific character, perhaps. One specific character, um, 
probably one of my favorites when I was a kid growing up was uh, Superboy. Um, this was the, the version that's the young Superman. Uh, I'd love to go back and, and do that, that version of that character again. What if they gave you Connell? Well, you know, it's kind of like eating a sandwich that doesn't taste as good. Would you start to like? Would you really start to push the envelope? Maybe start start to roll them back a little bit and make them make them more Smallville-ish. Oh, that's you know, even like, worse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> try and try and twist and mold Connell into a into a young Clark. I think what I would do is pretend I didn't understand what they gave me to do, and just write and draw him the way I wanted until they fired me. <laughs> Thanks. Well, uh, same question for Giselle as well, right? Uh, what's the question? He, he asked if you could take any mainstream character at all, any, any one of them, and uh, write the series. Who would it be? I've said it. I, I'd probably do Vampirella. To, I, I wanna, I'd like to take a stab at it. And uh, I don't know, I'd probably make it more funny. Uh, it wouldn't be so dark. Uh, I'd bring it back more to its roots. And uh, I'd draw it as sexy as I can. I'd be ashamed of it. Mm. That's good. I, I like. They have a new costume for Vampirella, don't they? Yeah, it's, it's not bad. It depends, depends on who draws it. Okay. Let's see. Right. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, uh, well, Archie, you know, used to be the years nothing would really change. Um, and I mean, remember years ago they did an Archie versus Punisher crossover, which you know, I don't think anyone in Riverdale got killed and. Uh, now you, the, now you got things like Afterlife of Archie or, or you know, Archie versus Punisher where the fatality rate among the cast is uh, pretty high. So we, any idea what changed? I mean, why are they willing to let their characters die off now? Uh, I'm sorry, what, what was the question? Okay, that's what the question is. Uh, like, well, you, you did, you know, Archie versus Predator and then there's the Afterlife of Archie. There's high fatality rate among the characters. And okay. for years, even when they did something like Archie versus Punisher, nobody died, so... Any idea what changed? Uh, I, well, I think we were willing to take more chances, I suppose, with uh, with the uh, with the crossover. Um, plus, too, the the Punisher, despite you know his his name, he's still kind of like a Marvel superhero. So the the violence, especially at the time that book came out, is, is still going to be maybe PG thirteen. But with the Predator, there's no holding him back. If he's going to show up in your story, people are going to die. <laughs> and um, I got to say, uh, while I was drawing that one, um, uh, I was surprised with every with every page. I mean, I, I didn't know how the story was going to go. I was getting the script, so I'm I'm reading it almost as as the fans are. And everything that I'm drawing, I'm I'm just thinking they're never going to let me get away with this. Uh, I got to keep that eraser handy because I know they're going to have me change this. Uh, and you know they never they never did. They let me uh, disembowel Sabrina and blow up her cat, and it was all good. <laughs> okay, thank you. Giselle, how many people did you kill with the Ramones? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> how many people died and Archie meets the Ramones? Uh, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> He was just saying that in Predator that there there was death, but in most of these crossovers there isn't. Are there more questions? The the mic is free. Go ahead. Um, do you guys have like a an issue that you're most proud of, or something like that? Uh, well, with me, it's it's really any of the uh, Predator issues, the Archie versus Predator issues. They were, you know, I I, I really took a lot of care with those and and put a lot of uh, of heart into those. Uh, and of course, um, probably maybe even more so than that is is die kitty die since that's really all all ours, all mine and Dan's, and it's it's really our um, undiluted vision in that we came up with it, we wrote it, um, you know, and, and there was nobody telling us, you know, don't do it because it's a stupid idea. <laughs> it's actually a, a, a big dig at publishers for the most part. <laughs> Publishers are idiots, and yeah, it's, it's actually it's really good, and we don't nobody. I don't think they take offense. I mean, maybe Archie does, but <laughs> I don't know. Giselle, same question to you. What was your your favorite issue that you may have done? Uh, that I'm the most proud of. Yeah. 
I'm really proud of the, uh, the Betty Boop work that I've done because it's uh, totally different from what I normally do and people wouldn't have expected that from me. Uh, so I think it, uh, it surprises even me. So I'm like, uh, so I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, other than that, uh, I, I'm, I'm proud of uh, Menage à Trois when I, I go back and, and uh, read the stuff that I've done. Like when I'm in the moment and I'm doing it, uh, sometimes I don't, I don't really know if is it, is it that funny, is it that good, but when I can read it like three, four years later, and I can detach myself from it, I appreciate it even more, and then I start liking it as a fan, even though like I did it. it to me, it's like if I didn't even do it. So it's like, uh, so it's pretty fun. It's like you, I can even read jokes that I know that I wrote, but I don't, don't even remember that I wrote them. So it's like, uh, so it's kind of fun. So I'd say, yeah, menage a trois, I mean, how can I not say that that's, you know, well, my you gotta favorite. love your own work, I mean. Well, it's, it's the one that also let me uh, do this as a, as a living. Uh, what about uh, like Reverse Dale for you? Would you ever revisit it? Oh, I'd do it in, in a heartbeat. Uh, I would do uh, Reverse Dale uh, mini. I would do a series on that uh, if they would want to do it. I, loved, I love gender bender stuff. Uh, bring it on. Uh, like, let I'm not the one who makes no. the decisions. No. So <laughs> I've, I've told them that I would do it, but... Um, they haven't come back to the well yeah. yet. No. Hey, is everybody familiar with the Reverse Dale stories? It's a gender bent Archie story where all the roles are gender reversed. Um, it's actually quite a bit of fun. Uh, I've, I've read it. Uh, my kid loves it. And uh, yeah, they. Uh, I, I would like to see more of it. I'd like to see it have its own little mini series, perhaps. They yeah. could flesh those characters out so much more. And I mean, they weren't straight. Uh, they weren't like straight just straight female versions of them. They, have, they, were, they were intricate. They were a little more... Well, uh, Archie actually becomes a little bit like Josie, in a sense, because it, it's, it's who Josie kind of was. It's almost like a female version you know, of Archie. But I, can, I prefer uh, Archie as a girl than Archie as the guy. It's, it's, I don't know. It's just that the, it's, she's, she's still, as Archie, can't choose between Betty and Veronica, who are male in this version, but... Uh, I don't know, it seems a little bit less, um, I don't know, less asshole. <laughs> yeah, uh, you could probably sense that, but Archie is probably her least favorite character of all of the Archie <laughs> characters. Um, I don't I hate him that much, I just don't find him as interesting as the other ones, that's all. There's a lot of characters to choose from, though, but so who would be, like, your favorite? In the world of Archie? In the, wor in the world of Archie, Josie, Sabrina, like, that whole... Jughead's probably my favorite right now, uh, but I mean, you know, it doesn't mean if there was a Jughead series, I'd rather have Fernando drawing it than me. Um, so, you know, so for me, I, I, I think I'd enjoy doing something with Josie or Sabrina or even Cheryl Blossom, I think might be a good fit for me because she's very sexy and that tends to be my forte. Unfiltered. She's unfiltered. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you'd say that Jughead is your favorite, but you'd rather work with one of those characters. Yeah, I'd rather give it, I'd rather Fernando worked on it. Yeah. So. Your favorite, Fernando? Uh, my favorite's always been Reggie. Yeah? The bad guy. Why, he, why is that? Because he gets to be evil. <laughs> <laughs> He's just not two-dimensional. He's, <laughs> He's got a little more depth to him. Well, but if you're going to do a series, would you want to do a series with him or any other particular character? Um... I, I'd like to do a series with, uh, I, you know, I think there's a lot of humor to be mined with Reggie, um, even as sort of like this anti-hero bad guy. Um, but I, I always loved like um, some of the more fantastic stuff, like Sabrina, you know, with the, with the magical base stories. Uh, and even some of the stuff like when they've done Archie as a superhero, the pure heart, the powerful stories, and, and Jughead as Captain Hero, that was always a lot of fun. Um, I did get to do Archie as the man from Riverdale. Yeah. It was uh, sort of a revitalization of Archie as a spy kind of a series. And that was a, that was a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Well, you got to sort of revisit, you sort of got to visit Reggie as a kind of a good guy in life with Archie. Yeah. You know, he was always a, a good guy in that. He was um, hooked up with uh, Betty in that. And I always just was waiting for him to really cut loose and turn evil. 
Oh, really? Yeah. I kind of liked how he, and I'm not going to provide any spoilers, but he kind of stepped up and helped when they needed it in uh, with, that, with, with the Veronica side of the story. Eh. I think I had a lot of good guys. Why water down you one main bad guy? Mm -hmm. I suppose. I suppose. So you would want to work with who? I'm sorry. Uh, I said um, uh, Sabrina, uh, Archie as Pure Heart of the Powerful, uh, Jughead as Captain Hero. Uh, I'd love to do another Man from Riverdale story. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'd like to see you take uh, the, the Legion of Superheroes concept and spread it over the, uh, the Archie universe. That, that would be, you know, if, if they were ever doing uh, other crossovers again, you know, the Legion of Superheroes with Archie. Um, one that was a, a, a close call that was, almost came to be was Archie and Star Trek. Oh, that yeah. would have been a lot of fun. Huh. Good question. Hello, uh, is, is there any character in any of your series that after a while of drawing them, you get sick and tired of drawing them, that you just want to kill them off? <laughs> Hmm. I I don't like it. not it's not because I'm not a fan of the character, but I'm not a big fan of drawing Archie because he's extremely. <laughs> We're getting that. <laughs> She's also not a fan of Archie, but please. It's, it's just he's very hard to draw. I, I don't know what it is. I just I can't get him right. And as soon as like, it, you know, like I'll I don't refer to all that often, so I'll do it like maybe once a year. So when they I get to it, I'm just like, oh god, I gotta draw Archie. So by the time I get comfortable with him, then I'm not drawing it anymore for another year. So then when he gets back to it, it's always trying to get the hang of, of doing uh, Archie. I find Jughead so much easier. Like, I, 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 he stays in my mind, but, but Archie is just it's so these subtle little things, and then he can look so weird. He's just like, <laughs> he can look like, like a little kid, but he's supposed to be a little bit older, and it's just like, I don't know. I, I can't be the only one who, finds that Archie is a little bit hard to, to draw. What do you think? Uh, you think he's a little bit odd? Like, sometimes um, he looks off? Like, n No, I mean, uh, Archie certainly has, you know, unique things about him, like the shape of his head and so forth. But, um, you know, they... Like the chin, you'd just be just a little bit off, and it's just like, it's, it's, like it's too short, it's too dull, it's just like, you know. Yeah, but, you know, they, they all sort of have that. Um, but I never really minded it that much. Um, uh, I mean, for me, I, I, honestly, I, there was never any character that I would say, okay, I got sick of. Like a horse, <laughs> or a motorcycle. Where's your mother? <laughs> my my mother. Uh, the, reason, the reason the reason that I am the way that I am is because of my mother. <laughs> she has a dirty mind. <laughs> so, who's your least favorite character to draw? Who would you kill off if you had the opportunity to? Uh, I'm not saying. Maybe. Try and stay away from Archie a little bit, since the poor guy's already gotten a beating over here. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know if there's anyone I would really want to bump off just because I didn't like draw. I, I don't think there's anybody. You know, I guess if I got onto something like um, that was really, really complicated. You know, if like I was Spawn. Well, yeah. Those, too many those, lines. Those chains. Yeah, yeah. That, that would drive me nuts. Um, you know, maybe something like Ghost Rider, where I have to draw motorcycle all the time. Uh, and chains. Yeah. Motorcycle chains. and chains, it's double the nightmare. Yeah. So, uh, you know, maybe something like that. Um, I was never crazy about drawing the musical instruments, so all, all the stories featuring the Archies or, or Josie and the Pussycat. Um, uh, as long as they that. weren't a band, I'd be I okay I have something with saved on my desktop. <laughs> of one of the stories that he drew for Josie and the guitars are so bad that he, you know, <laughs> I have it every time that he's like, he thinks he's like, you know, you know, you, you need to bring him down a bit, you know? <laughs> and then I, I send him this thing, remember this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you love me. Oh. Um, I'll never forget that guitar. We have like, 
five minutes, and then we have to give these things away. So just a, a heads up that you right. have a little less than five minutes before we, we have to cut her off here. Do uh, you want to ask your question? I was just wondering, my, my mom grew up in Quebec as well, so I know they have a different style quite often with their art. And I was wondering um, if you find it more difficult to draw more PG comic books, or is it about the same difficulty, just less enjoyable? Hmm. Me? Yeah. Uh, well, f I don't know what it is with me, but whatever I draw, it's, it, for, they seem to think it's always too sexy. And it's like I can make the bikinis on them like they're like they're from the thirties and I swear to god they're still gonna say can you can you make them any harder? I mean would you want me to dress them up? Like it's just the shape of the body. It's almost like they're like ashamed of the shape of the body. It's like I mean it, I'm so i I've seen some drawings from other people where the bikini is way, way more skimpy than what I would do and then they let it fly. But me as soon as I draw the the shape of the body they they, 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 they they accuse me of making it too sexy, so it is a little bit hard sometimes, you know. But I mean, it's, it's just the one, the way that it's I draw. Just the natural female form, really. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're gonna be curvy. I think I do them maybe a little bit too curvaceous, but to me, it's like that the way people are, you know. Like I had much less problems with gem and holograms, where I could, you know, put a bit of meat on them, and there was like no problems there, you know. So strange. Okay, so I had a question and I lost it, so somebody's gotta save my butt and get up and ask me a question here. I had a question and it flew out of my head like, well, like that word that I was just gonna use to describe it. If you could adapt anything into- Oh, we just had a question up front, just one moment. Just, that's okay, that's okay. He, no, just, just stay there I'll, and I'm gonna come to you. No, it's okay. Don't be embarrassed. I do that all the time, I interrupt. And uh, I, I, I want to crawl off the stage, but do you work in other mediums? Uh, well, you know, I, we pencil. I have to sometimes ink my own work, uh, and certainly at like conventions and in doing commissions, I have to color my work, which will involve markers or sometimes watercolor. Um, and personally, I, I've always enjoyed watercolors and, and oil painting as well. Yeah. Yeah. Giselle, do you work in other? I, Mediums? I pencil, ink, color. I like to letter my own stuff if I can, uh, even though it's digital. I could probably do it by hand, but I don't know. I, my arm, I, I get a lot of tennis elbow when I'm working on the actual paper. That's why I like to be digital. I can, I, 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 I don't know, less, put less pressure. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I've, I've taken visual arts classes where I had to do paintings and stuff like that, but it's, it's sculptured, and, and, but it's not something that. I do really, so I guess the other stuff that I do is music. I like to play music once in a while, because I used to do that before, so uh, yeah. I'm gonna come to you so you don't have to get up. Okay, what did you wanna ask? Um, I was just wondering, if you ever had the chance to adapt something into a comic that hadn't previously been adapted into a comic, what would you, choo what would you like it to be or choose it? What was the question? If you, if there was something that hadn't been adapted to a comic yet that you would want to adapt to a comic, what would that be? By the way, I love your accent. Oh. But, um, I know, but the way that you asked it was kind of with the British. Was I the only one that picked that up? It sounded a little British. Right? So please, uh, go ahead, Fernando. I would love to see Jaws, the comic book. <laughs> <laughs> the Continuing Adventures of Captain Quint because he survives. <laughs> but Woody in your comic? Well, he, he, in my version of Continue Jaws, adventures. he made it. He <laughs> crawled out of the shark. Part, the, the fourth issue, he dies. It's, it's a big twist. Who, well, what, what would you uh, uh, adapt? It's been done uh, in the, uh, I think it was late 80s, early 90s, but uh, I'd like to like, kind of do it again. It's uh, Fright Night. The, the, uh, Ooh. The movie from the 80s, uh, it's just, I love that movie. I don't know why I love that movie. I think it's because it just it hit me just at the time that I was getting into the horror movie uh, genre, and uh, it's just it stuck with me. I, I, I love the revamp, I love the old one. Uh, I think there's possibilities there, and uh, I'd love to work on that. Okay. We have time for probably one more quick question before we have to give this away, so go ahead. I'm just wondering. Um, 
in the past few years, there's been an introduction of more adult themes into comics like Gem and the Holograms and Riverdale with gay relationships, but largely they're still with regular looking white blonde characters. And I'm just wondering if they're gonna push that forward to maybe, I don't know, go farther with it, like introduce some more dynamics that are kind of emerging now. Do you mean like by, by race or by yeah, like maybe fluid, some, gender fluid characters? Yeah, like maybe some gender fluid characters, maybe introducing some more like biracial relationships, things like that. I'm I know glad I'm not I, answering this one. I really appreciate. I don't know it. what I'd say. Uh, I really probably. appreciated them taking <laughs> really a long-standing should. character like Stormer and Aja, and they have a relationship in the new Gem comic, which I think is really forward-thinking and move. It's moving something that like maybe comes from a time that didn't have that be inclusive, mm -hmm. and now it's inclusive. Yeah, yeah. I, I think nowadays um, we're more open to to anything more than ever before. So. I, I would say if you haven't seen the relationship you would like to see, hang in there, it'll probably come up sooner or yeah. later somewhere. Um, I, I don't really think anything's off the table anymore. You know, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's great that it's like wide open and things are happening. It, it is, it is. Well, thank you. You're, you're welcome. What would you? Um, I mean, I'm doing it with my own stuff. So I mean, uh, Sticky Dilly Bun has intersex character, a gender fluid character. I have transgender characters. I have gays, bisexuals. Uh, nobody's, everybody has something. And so I mean, uh, they can come to me and I'll certainly push it in if they want me to, <laughs> but they'll never come to me because they know that they probably won't like the result. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys. We're going to start drawing for these things. I'm going to take some pictures of these myself before we do that. Uh, pretty much see what we got here. I want a picture before it goes too far. Just so I can make a print to sell at shows. <laughs> Splatter at it. We almost done, Giselle? I just need to put some spots there so that I can. I didn't finish anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll go, we'll start with uh, Fernando's. I'm going to draw a ticket. So pull out your tickets, please. <coughs> okay, you can't play favorites. Okay, I got one. All right, we ready. It is three, five, four. One, zero, two, five. One, zero, two, five. Last four digits. One, zero, two, five. Oh, we have a Look winner. who it is. Come on up. He'll personalize that to you if you like. Just tell me your name. What was your name? Elise, congratulations. E-L-I-S-E. There you go. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. I can we, we can pull the pull the number and do that thing. Oh yeah, I'll turn. Okay. Yeah. Pull the number. Um, three five four zero nine two nine. Zero nine two nine. Yeah. Come on up. <laughs> She's just gonna finish up just a couple of things on it, and then uh, she'll personalize it to you. And uh, yeah. shall I make it? I make it out too? I make it out too? Sarah, uh, Congratulations, Sarah. Right. I'm going to get a photo of it real quick. Just.
Did you guys have fun? Thank you. Were you entertained? <laughs> thank you all for coming out. I wish we had more to disperse, but we don't. But uh, thank you so much for coming out, and thank you so much for our artists for doing the uh, sketch oh, battle. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Alcon.